Welcome back to Web Business 2010. We're wrapping up the interview portion of our day, um, but we've got one of our keynote speakers from yesterday. I'm going to say I'm going to say it wrong, Agnieszka. That's perfect. Oh, oh yay! Well, I'm only going to say it the one time then. No, that's How are perfect. you doing? I'm doing good. You were a little harried yesterday when when I talked to you backstage. Well, you caught me right before my <laughs> big presentation, and that's yeah. always a little bit nerve-wracking, but it gets easier every time, so I'm doing great today. How did it go? <laughs> I thought it was, I mean, it was it was good. You know, you always are a little hard on yourself after the fact and mm -hmm. can think of all the things you should have and done differently, but yeah. um, it's really fun to do these kinds of things. I really enjoy the process of preparing everything, mm -hmm. so I thought it was, it was, I mean, I thought it was fine, but it, you know. What was the keynote cool. about? Um, my keynote focused on the importance that I, my viewpoints on the importance of emotional engagement with design on mm -hmm. the web and how um, personality and voice is something that's really key in just how we interact with anything in our lives and um, just the importance of that sort of as, uh, acknowledging that visual impact that everything we see has on us as we experience. So you're talking more about putting in the, verse, the personality and the voice of the person who's creating the content in the site, or the or, or just acknowledging keeping in mind the. It really depends because all sites are not created equal. So right. there are sites that you know it, their role is not to have their own voice to really let the content have the voice. But uh -huh. when it, that's not the right balance, and you're trying to create an environment and tell a story or a message with what you're creating, it's mm -hmm. really important, I think, to just pay attention to all the details and all the elements that it, that make up an environment, a visual environment that you're creating. And if what you're trying to accomplish is something that looks undesigned or blank, so that it, it is that sort of environment, so it, it gives you the cues. Space. Exactly. But um, but I just, I, I just wanted to talk about all the different ways that we create these environments in the process of design and how it might be kind of evolving over time. And how did that become it. your focus? How was that something that you became interested in? <clears throat> Um, well, I've been designing now for 11 years mm -hmm. um, since I've been out of school, and I've always really focused on. I mean, w even though I work mostly in interactive, I also work in print and packaging and branding. So, sort of telling, figuring out how to tell a visual story is something that's always at the forefront of every single project that we do at my studio. Mm -hmm. So, I approach any project that way, and web is no different to me. So, mm -hmm. it's just something that I wanted to explore and. Um, for this particular topic, I just found that there was a lot of strong opinions out there that things should become more standard and more templated and that the sort of visual style and the beauty of interfaces isn't really the key, that interaction is key, which I agree that it is important, but um, I just think the visual component can't really be taken out of the equation. So it's just more an exploration. Such a visual media. <laughs> exactly. So you think there's a tendency towards wanting to streamline things and have more template -y I've seen a lot of opinions about that sort of approach hmm. and strong viewpoints. And I think there's a place for that. There's definitely a place for, you know, especially social platform sites that really become, you know, a backbone of something else and really show the content. There's, there's a time and a place for that, but I just think that there's a tendency online for a lot of things to really look the same and to follow very um, kind of, you know, typical trends and visual cues that we all kind of get inspired by each other and we pull them from various places, but every choice you make with how you design something, even though it seems so constrained and there seems to be yeah. so many restrictions, it's almost like restrictions are just part of design and you have to figure out a way to work around them and I think you have you have a choice you make with every visual decision that you can create and, and every part, everything that you do make is part of the the cues that you give your users as to what you're about and what the feel of it should be. I really wonder if that standardization comes from the fact that uh, there's a big use of use movement. Everyone wants to be able to do things themselves. No one yes. actually, most people, you know, they're bootstrapping. They don't have the cash right. to hire a designer. Right. And if they can just go and download a template for something and that, then tweak it a and little. And there's a place for that. Yeah. And those templates are made by people who know what they're doing and are facilitating that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, the web is definitely an interesting arena because there are more websites than ever. I mean, over 200 million, and yeah. there are not a lot of them are made by people. I always love that number because it always sounds so ridiculous. There's over 200 million. No, Two, anytime someone that. says over 200, yeah. oh wait, no, <laughs> there actually are. Wait, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's sort of an interesting arena because there are so. It's, I think more than any other sort of visual design area mm -hmm. before it. Now there's so many people that are creating sites that don't necessarily have design training, and that's not bad, it's just creating a certain vernacular. Uh, yeah. We're getting used to seeing things look a certain way, but yeah, no, I think there's a place for templates. I think they really help people 
I mean, the same way that, you know, when you're decorating your home, you go to a store and you buy cabinets. You don't have to make them yourself. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, but we're much more likely to go buy a cabinet than we are to go hire someone to do a website for us. Right, but if you can buy those templates off the shelf, there's, I think yeah. there's a place for that. I think there's not a blanket solution to everything. You yeah. have to just kind of weigh. So, so what I just was thinking a lot about is just the, what are some of the ins and outs of all of that? Because there's not a single answer, obviously. So did you fly in yesterday? I flew in Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Okay, so you've yes. been here for a little while. Yes. When do you go home? T tonight. Oh, you go home tonight? Yeah. She's going back to New York. It's not very Portlandy there. <laughs> no, it's, a very, it's 80 and sunny. <laughs> it's 80 and sunny? <laughs> yeah. Not uh, that I mind this. I, I don't mind this weather. Poland's like this in the summer, too. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. I really appreciate you coming Thank up to talk. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll Thank see you. you again today. Thank you.